Today, I will discuss the part one of the value added tax on importation. So it's all about uh, VAT on importation. So when we when will we pay VAT on importation? Now, typically, babayaran natin yung VAT on importation pag tayo nag-import. So meron kasi dalawang klase ng importation. Eh. It's importation of goods, importation of services. When we import goods, babayaran natin yung VAT on importation sa Bureau of Customs. Bago natin ma-release yung product o makukuha yung product sa Bureau of Customs, babayaran natin yung VAT on importation. Uh, and yung the other one is final withholding VAT. So babayaran natin yun kapag tayo nag-import ng service. No? Babayaran natin yun kay Bureau of Internal Revenue o kay BIR. So yun. So yun yung pag-uusapan natin. So ito yung part one. Let's start. So importation. The purchase of goods or services by Philippine resident from non-resident seller. So, importation class, ito kasi yung pagpasok ng products from outside the Philippines papunta sa Pilipinas. Kaya nga tinawag siyang importation. Import. Di ba? Parang sa basketball, sa PBA, mag import ka ng player. Di ba? It's a foreigner. So, yun yung importation. Ngayon, yung importation kasi na yan is mas subject sa business tax. Okay? So, meron tayong babayaran ng VAT on importation. So, pag tayo nag-import ng goods, subject siya sa VAT on importation. Pag tayo nag-import ng services, ang tawag dun sa VAT na babayaran nung nag-import is final withholding VAT. No? Matidiscuss siya on the later part of the the slides. Okay? Impose. Sino ba ang matatax ng VAT on importation? Yung nag-import o yung buyer. Actually, class, hindi niya makukuha yung product niya, yung in-import niya, hanggat hindi niya binabayaran yun sa Bureau of Customs. Sino ba ang masasubject sa final withholding VAT? Yung service provider. Di ba? Yung service provider na bumili dito sa Pilipinas. So, statutory taxpayer, ito yung magbabayad, mag-aabot ng pera kay BIR o kahit kaninong LGU. So, importer. Okay. So, sa button importation, yun nga lang, babayaran mo yan sa Bureau of Customs. Kasi nga, prior dun sa uh, release nung in-import bong goods or commodities, hindi siya lalabas hanggang hindi mo siya binayaran. Sa resident purchaser naman of the service, siya yung magbabayad kapag ang in-import is service. Okay? In-import is service. Next, direct, uh, uh, yung nature, direct siya kasi yung magbabayad class, yung statutory taxpayer natin, siya ang magkakaroon ng burden yung buyer o yung importer natin. Unlike sa final withholding VAT, yung resident na bumili, yung bumili na sa Pilipinas, siya ang magbabayad kay government. Pero basically, ipapatong i-shoulder siya nung transaction niya sa Pilipinas. And then, tax basis, total landed cost, and then contract price. Sa uh, VAT on importation, ibig sabihin ng tax basis class, dito natin i-multiply. Dito natin i-pay tax na babayaran natin. Sa VAT on importation, landed cost, ang tawag natin sa final withholding VAT, yung contract price. Okay? Sa collecting agent na, na natin, kung sino ba yung mga kolekta, so collecting agency natin, Bureau of Customs, and then sa final withholding VAT, CPIR. Timing. Kung si timing, kailan natin babayaran yung tax. Okay? Babayaran natin yung tax. Bata ng importation before withdrawal of goods bago natin siya ma-withdraw kay Bureau of Customs. Doon naman sa final withholding VAT, babayaran natin siya uh, a month after ng payment natin doon sa service provider coming from outside the Philippines. Pero siya 30 days to be exact. No? Bago niya bayaran. Okay? So let's start. Next page tayo. Mm -hmm. So, importation of exempt goods. So, bakit natin kailangan malaman ano ba yung mga items na exempted? Kasi class, ang goal natin dito, no? Sa taxation kasi class, da, dalawa lang yan. Taxable ba siya o hindi? Okay? So, kung, kung hindi siya exempted, malamang taxable siya. So, ngayon, kailangan natin malaman ano ba yung mga items na ma -e except sa VATAN importation. Okay? Number one, basic human food-related goods such as agricultural and marine food products in their original state. Livestock and poultry of a general kind used as a yielding or producing foods for human consumption. Next is breeding stock and genetic materials, therefore. And next is books, newspaper, and magazine. Pag mas dan maklash yung sa basic human food and regulate, re, uh, related goods. Ito yung mga human necessity class. Ito yung mga kailangan talaga natin para mag-survive. Pagkain. 
'di ba? So kung itatax mo pa yung pagkain plus lalaki yung tax, ah, lalaki yung consumption price, consuming price ng ano, consumer price ng bibili. So basically, hindi na sila sinasabi sa basis sa business tax, yun nga, para at least afford naman kahit yung mga low income earner natin, yung mga basic necessities natin. Okay? So books, passenger, cargo vessels, including engine equipment and spare parts. Okay? Sa so, isahin natin, dito, dito tayo sa basic human, food, and related products. So, import exemption is limited to, so limited sila sa agricultural or marine food products in their original state or those which undergo simple processing. Sinabi niya class original state. Hindi naman ibig sabihin na original state, yung kung ano man yung original ng kalagayan, pag binenta mo siya, ganun pa rin siya. Like for example, yung palay, di ba? Uh, harvested mo yung palay. Ba, para maluto mo yung palay, kailangan walang balat yan. Alangan naman iluto mo yung palay, pakuloyin mo, di ba? Pag naluto, kakainin mo na may balat, ang tikas ng balat eh. So di ba tinatanggal yung balat, pinaprasa siya, gagawin siyang bigas. So, okay? It's undergone simple processing. So ibig sabihin, consider pa rin siya na exempted pagdating sa business taxation. Plus no, dito lang muna tayo sa button importation. So exempted siya sa button importation. Good that underwent advanced processing are vatable. No, mamaya madidiscuss naman kung ano ba yung mga simple processing. Example of exempt agricultural or marine food products in their original state are rice and corn, marine food products, poultry and livestock, yung mga baboy o karne. Alam ka naman yung baboy sir para maging original state. Kailangan baboy pa rin siyang pinalagay mo sa palengke. Di ba? Hindi Pag nalagay mo yung baboy, karani na yun eh, nakaka-chop-chop na yun. Pero still undergo simple processing pa rin yun. Hindi naman ibig sabihin baboy ang bibilhin mo. Bibilhin mo pa rin siya ng baboy sa palengke para ma-exempt siya sa baton importation. Hindi naman class, okay? Milk, eggs, and meats for human consumption. Uh, grapes, apples, orange, and other fruits. Vegetable, tea, ginseng. They are considered as agricultural or marine food products in their original state. So exempted sila sa baton importation. Okay, so ayun yung basic human necessity. Uh, take example ng livestock natin. Cows, bulls, pig, sheep, goats, then uh, ducks, turkey. Hindi ko, na alam, hindi ko alam na kinakain pala yan, no? pero hindi pa ako kumain ng turkey. No? Marine food shall include fish, but not limited to lobster, shrimps, prawns, oysters, uh, mussels, and clams. So ayun yung mga livestock na considered class sa marine. So itong mga taklas exempted sila. Pero class yung kumare na no, yung muscles, yung tahong. Pag niluto mo yan, sinangkapan mo na yan, hindi na siya tahong. Uh, kumare ano na siya? Ano ba yun? Yung buttered, buttered muscles. So palamang, eh yan ay subject na sa business taxation. Okay? The goods must be in the raw form. However, those that underwent simple processing are also considered exempted. Okay? So ito nga yun yung meaning ng, ano eh, ng simple processing. The term simple processing includes act of preparation for the market. Yun nga, yung baboy, para make sense siya, pwede naman sa i-chop-chop. Tanggalin yung dugo, tanggalin yung mga bituka, yung mga matutumi, yung hindi naman nakakain. Ibenta siya sa market na karne na. Okay? So, it's a simple processing. So, considered pa rin siyang exempted. Acts of preservation, for example, yung daing. Uh, daing yan eh. So, kailangan nakababay sa suka. Hindi pa rin, considered pa rin yan as simple processing. And then as a, a packaging includes advanced technology means of packaging, yung pagbalot niya. So it's still considered pa rin yan as simple processing. Di ba? Kailangan naman bilhin, bilhin mo yung ano, bilhin mo yung pa, bigas. So, so, uh, 50 kilos. Kailangan naka per plastic kada isang ano, hindi glass. So, di ba? Pwedeng maganda rin yung packaging nila. Okay? So that's, that's what you call simple processing. Next. Uh, another example of acts of preparation. So, meron tayo dito ang broiling. Meron tayo dito ang boiling. Papakuluin. Di ba? Meron tayong husking. Meron tayong roasting. Mga sa manok, di ba? Nira-roast uh, nira yung chicken. And then, meron tayong stripping. Meron tayong grinding. Like, for example, yung sa, yung sa karne ng baboy, yung Yung para sa ano, yung para sa, 
giniling, 'di ba, yung karne ng baboy ginigiling sa grinder 'yon. So 'yon, acts of simple preparation 'yon. Okay? Next. Example of uh, simple preservation, freezing, direct, syempre para hindi masira kaagad, drying, pinapatuyo, like for example, tuyo, 'di ba? And then smoking, pinapauso, salting, stripping, and grinding. Okay? So, yun yung mga example ng acts of uh, preservation. Parang nasama lang yung stripping at grinding ulit. Okay? So, another example tayo. So, has uh, grown raw, raw cane sugar, roasted beans, ordinary salt, salt diba? Boiled eggs, lechon. So, exempted pa rin yan. Part pa rin yan ng mga... Ano ba? Iba nga simple processing. Okay? Ito naman class, depende sa purpose niya. Like for example, yung mga flowers na hindi naman kinakain, like yung cauliflower, eh, exempted pa rin sila sa business tax. Pero yung mga bulaklak na log gifts, di ba? Batable sila. Cock fighting chickens are 32% batable. No, I'm not sure kung anong klase yung tax lang to, no? And then, batables, since they are primary, intended for human amusement. Okay? So, ayun. Depende sa purpose nila. Kung yan ay for human consumption, ay necessity natin, kaya sila ini-exempt. Okay? Next. Uh, farm inputs intended for the production of marine or agricultural food products, which are ultimately intended for human consumption, are also but exempt. Basta class, no? Kapag yun ay kailangan talaga. I mean, basic necessity. Ine-exempt yun ng government. Okay? Alam, pagkain yan eh. The importation of farm or fish fishery inputs. Like for example, yung punla ng palay, punla yung mga punla nung kumari, tilapia, exempted pa rin yun. Kasi for human consumption sila. Okay, rules on the taxation of poultry and feed. So, Livestock and poultry, alam natin, they are exempted. Pero yung mga pets, eh, yan ay tinatax natin yan. Kasi hindi sila typically for human consumption. Next. Uh, books, magazine, uh, reviews, uh, bulletins. The fat exemption on the importation of these goods is apparently based upon the necessity of education and information since, tinan mo na, Could you imagine kung lalagyan mo pa ng tax yung binabayaran mong book na mga foreign authors, di ba? Like for example, yung sa AIS, MIMAS, sa management accounting, di ba? Tataas yung presyo. Mas, baka mamaya mas mahirapan yung mga parents na lalong i-afford yung book na yun kung lalagyan pa natin yan ng business tax. Okay? Basta kailangan sa education na ina-exempt na yan ng government. Okay? So what will be the condition plus? What will be the condition ngayon para ma-accept yung mga newspaper, magazines, review, and then or bulletin? Okay, so first, they must be appear. They must appear at regular intervals with fixed prices for subscription. So interval, ibig sabihin, kumare every year may bagong issuance ng, ng, ano, ng series ng book. So interval yun, every, every, every year. Okay, next is the sale must not be devoted principally to the publication of paid advertisement. So basically, hindi yan devoted para dun sa paid advertisement. Kasi kung mayroon ay paid advertisement, tatawal na yan. Eh. Hindi naman the basic necessity yun. Eh. Di ba? Kahit, kahit, kahit naman nga wala yung advertisement ng mga yun, eh, pwede mabuhay ang tao basta may pagkain siya. Di ba? So, yun yung mga requirements natin. Note that exemption do not, does not extend to the other school supplies such as chalk, board markers, pens, notebook, pad paper, and office supplies. So, hindi sila kasali. Doon sa exemption natin. Pag nag-import, ah, class, no? Once again, we are talking about VAT on importation. No? Hindi ito general na VAT, no? VAT on importation lang to. Okay, passengers or cargo vessels and aircrafts. The exemption cover, sabi dito, the import of passenger or cargo vessels, including engine, pati yung equipment niya, spare parts for it, uh, domestic or international transport operation. So, ang purpose ng government dito, kaya nila, kaya nila ini-exempt itong mga to in, help, in the effort daw to help the modernization of the shipping. Imaginein mo, syempre kapag bago yung mga aeroplano, eh, mas ma-attract yung mga, mga tourist natin. For example, from other country, like yung 
eroplano ni Pal, di ba? Pag nalaman nila, uy, bago itong eroplano nito, matibay ito, safety ito. Siyempre, di ba? Kaya-kaya ang bilhin ito ni Pal kasi nga, hindi na nga siya subject sa VATO na importation. Okay? Uh, vessels importation and mandatory vessels retirement program. So, merong retirement program naman yung mga vessels natin. So, kung gusto mong basahin yan, search mo yung ruling ni Marina dyan. May Marina Industry and Authority. So, ibig sabihin class, upon reaching the age of this uh, vessels, no? Oh, vessels, kailangan i-retired mo na sila. So, sa passenger cargo vessels, 15 years. Sa tankers, 10 years. Sa high-speed passenger craft, 5 years. Okay, so dapat eh, ma-retired mo na sila upon reaching that age. Kasi iniiwasan nga ng gobyerno. Siyempre, baka dyan pa sila masira eh. Uh, kasi nga, class, inaano nga natin, di ba? Pino-promote nga natin, but how can we promote kung yung mismong mga vessels natin is matagal na, eh, medyo baka mamaya mahirapan natin ma-secure yung quality nila. So, basically, eh, ine-exempt na yun ni government as long as yun nga, meron silang retirement program. Okay? So, ayun yung sa vessels natin. So, ayun yung mga ano natin class, no? Ayun yung mga, ayun yung tatlong diniscuss dito na sinabi na exempted class. Okay? Doon sa button importation. Okay? So, ito yung tatlo. Ito yung for basic necessity. Di ba? Uh, books, newspaper, and then passenger cargo vessels of aircraft. Okay. Next. Uh, dito tayo sa Okay. Importation by VAT exempt person. VAT exempt persons are not subject to VAT on importations. The extent of their exemption varies per, per, per exempt person. Class kanina, yung mga exempted na importation na exempted sa VAT on importation is yung mismong item na ini-import mo. Ngayon naman class dito, ang sinasabi natin dito, yung mismong tao, yung mismong corporation na bibili, na exempted sila, hindi yung item. Kanina kasi item eh. Ngayon naman yung mismong taxpayer, siya yung exempted. Siya yung hindi subject sa business tax. Okay? When an exempt importer subsequently sells his exempt importation to a non-exempt person, the non-exempt person shall buy the VAT on importation. Tingnan nyo class. Kung mara ako ay isang person o taxpayer na kapag nag-import, hindi subject yung binibili ko sa VAT on importation. No? Regardless kung yan ay VATable o hindi. Kanina kasi ang, sin ang exempted yung item, pero dito yung person mismo. So, kung yung tao o yung taxpayer na nag-import is exempted at subsequently binenta niya dun sa tao o sa taxpayer na hindi naman exempted sa VAT on importation, eh dapat magbayad yung non-exempt sa VAT on importation. At ipahit niya kay Bureau of Customs. Pero, I'm not sure kung paano ito inahabol ni Bureau of Customs in reality. No? Pero syempre nga, eh, hindi naman lahat pwedeng basta-basta ka nalang ma-exempt. Eh. Mahirap kumuha ng certification na exempted ka sa tax, sa EBIR. Napakahirap. So basically, hindi ka lang kadaling makakuha ng exemption, okay? Ng exemption sa VAT on importation. Okay? So kung tingnan nyo class, no? Kasi class, binili nung non-exempt eh. So, dapat yung non-exempt na yun, pag bumili yun talaga sa, lab, sa labas, other than dun sa exempted, eh, magbabayad ng ano yun eh, ng VAT on importation eh. Kapag binili niya yung sa exempt, dapat masubject siya. Kasi magkakaroon dito ng tax evasion pag hindi binayaran ng non-exempt yan. So, kailangan pa rin yung bayaran class. Okay? So, ito yung mga exempted na tao o exempt person under the NIRC, International Shipping or Air Transport Operator, international ah. Uh, agricultural cooperatives and ecozone locators. Okay? Sa isahin natin, international shipping or air transport is limited to the importation of fuel, goods, supplies. For example, class, si US Airline, eh may daladalang ano yun eh, may daladalang gas yun eh, fuel, supplies, di ba? So, hindi naman kasi pwede magkaroon ng domestic flights si US Airline. Ang pwede lang na magkaroon ng domestic flights is yung mga domestic Air, uh, air, air, air natin, air, air operators natin, okay? Air transport operators natin, like si PAL, si, si Bupa, okay? Kasi class intentionally, uh, literally, yung mga bibilhin ng mga international shippers natin, di ba gagamitin niya yun sa international flights niya? Tingnan mo, 
pagpasok niya ng Pilipinas, nag-import siya ng gas. Pero di ba, lalabas din yun eh. Gagamitin niya doon sa biyahe niya, papalabas ng Pilipinas. Kasi nga, hindi naman sila pwede magbiyahe ng domestic flights dito sa Pilipinas. Okay? Illustration, Malaysian ferries, okay? It's an international shipping carrier. It's imported to the Philippines, the fuel and supplies to business shipping operation. So basically, class, hindi ito masasubject sa business tax o sa pattern importation kasi hindi naman intentionally, oh, hindi naman gagamitin yung dala-dala niya dito sa domestic operation dito kasi hindi siya pwede magkaroon ng domestic operation. Unless may mga company talaga na, ano, although international sila, pero registered sila dito sa Pilipinas. Okay? Eh, international carrier na pinagawa sa akin natin. Okay? Kaya exempted yung mga yon sa but on importation. Next, agricultural cooperatives. So, the status of the agri-coop as but exempt is limited to the importation of direct farm inputs, machineries and equipment, spare parts. Class, oh guys, hindi naman ibig sabihin si agri-coop ay eh, nag-import. Lahat ng in-import niya exempted sa but on importation. Ang exempted lang yung direct farm inputs. Ano yung, yung mga ginagamit nila, class? Doon sa, ano nila, pagiging co-op nila, agri nila. Kung marun, tatalo sila ng palay. They're planting palay. So, kung naman yung mga ginagamit na inputs para makapagtanim ng palay, kung yan man ay fertilizer, kung yan man ay binhe, exempted pa rin yan sa pattern importation. Including the machineries and equipment and spare parts. Yung mga pyesa ng mga equipment natin. So, pwede yan. They are exempted from pattern importation. Take note ha. Yung taxpayer ang exempted dito, hindi yung item mismo. So, what will be the conditions now para ma-avail ni agri-coop yung pagiging exempted niya? Una, a cooperative must be an agricultural cooperative, duly registered and in good standing with cooperative development authority. So dapat daw eh, in good standing siya. Yung good standing class para siyang certification na wala tong hindi nasasubmit, wala siyang violation, in good standing siya. Next, the importation involves direct input farms, machinery equipment, and spare parts. Yung na-discuss ko sa inyo kanina, basta ginagamit dun sa output nila, nung pagiging exempted nila. So yun ay parte o exempted. Kasi class pag umari, bumili sila ng machinery na hindi naman ginagamit dun sa pagtatalim nila ng palay, eh yun ay hindi na exempted. Okay? So ayun na, ayun yun sa agri-cooperatives. And lastly, Yung mga locators natin. Uh, Egozon locators are designated places of economic activity for the production of goods and services for the export market. Although class, itong mga locators natin, eh, sila ay nandito sa Pilipinas talaga. Literally na, sa Pilipinas sila. Pero pagdating sa taxation kasi, they are considered as outside. Sabi nga dito, by legal fiction, economic zones are considered foreign countries and are deemed outside customs territory or dim, assume na they are existing outside the Philippines. Ibig sabihin class, parang hindi sila nandito sa Pilipinas. By legal fiction lang. Pero in reality, nandito pa rin sila. Kaya exempted ang mga in-import nila sa VAT on importation. Okay? For taxation purposes, para sa VAT on importation, uh, parang wala sila dito, pero nandito sila. Okay, thus, the importation of goods into the eco zones by the locators is exempt from only from VAT but also from custom duties. Uh, basically, napaka-clear na sinasabi niya. The exemption from VAT covers any goods, supplies, machineries brought into the eco zones by locators. Siyempre yung ginagamit ng mga locators. So what if sir, yung locators na yan, binenta niya yon, binili niya, yung in-import niya, sa non-exempt? Masasubject ba yun sa VAT on importation? Yes. Kasi binenta niya siya eh, binenta niya sa non-exempt eh. O pag ipinta niya, dapat sa exempt din. Pag non-exempt, eh, ta taxable yun. Uh, similarly, sales to egozones are subject to zero-rated VAT for tax pay VAT taxpayers because egozones are considered foreign territories. Likewise, sales to egozones are exempt from business tax for non-VAT taxpayer. Okay? So, kasi class, no, yung, kasi class, ito, although wala pa siya dito, pag nag-export ka kasi class, Subject yun sa zero-rated sales, generally, ha? So, di ba, sabi nga natin, for taxation purposes, yung mga nasa ecozones natin, they are considered as foreign territories, as with outside the territories of the Philippines, para silang nasa foreign territories. Kaya, subject din sila sa zero-rated. So, this will be discussed on Chapter 6. 
Okay? Ay, chapter 7, if I'm not mistaken, yung eh, gusto nyo yung mga zero-rated sales natin. So, yun yung importansya class na although yung mga nasa locate, yung mga locators natin, yung mga ego zone natin, nasa Pilipinas sila, pero for taxation purposes kasi they are considered, ha, par parang de, sila ay mga foreign, um, foreigner. Di ba? Wala sila dito sa Pilipinas. Pero nandito na naman talaga sila sa Pilipinas. Okay? So, I think that's the part one of the value added tax on importation. Please watch the part two of the value added tax on importation.